We are on set this afternoon with Jabari Ayembe Tate. We are in his workspace and Jabari is an accomplished costume designer. We thought it would be good to take a few minutes of his time and ask a few questions and basically find out what got his interest in costume designing and how he got his start. Oh, my interest in costume design came at a very young age. Um, as early as secondary school, as early as Form 1 doing tech end, you know, we had to create a costume for your projects. You know, that got me love for it. You know, in Form 3 winning the African Day King competition, where I was able to then win a chance to intern by the Jones, you know, where I was able to learn and was nurtured in it and just the love for it grew. You know, being young, the energy, your energy is all over the place. You're, you're literally a ball of energy, and sometimes challenging, channeling that energy becomes a challenge. You know, depending on your surroundings, depending on your circumstances, and you know, and, and that's why I liked working with Miss Jones. You know, is she thought she taught me from early how to settle myself and channel that creative energy all the way through from conception to finishing the gown. My most significant achievement will have to be Moulin Rouge. Moulin Rouge is a production I'm currently working on. It's currently running actually in Apple Bowl from the 28th, I think to the 30th, where I am the costume designer. Mm -hmm. And in Moulin Rouge, as a costume designer, I'm being able to tell, I'm being given a chance from the director to be able to tell my story in the costumes. You know, from every color, from every bra to every sequence, it's telling my story as a costume designer, my vision for each of these characters. What and is that's your story? story? Well, the story I'm trying to tell in Moulin Rouge is that the songs, I'm heavily influenced by the music of Moulin Rouge. For those of you who don't know, Moulin Rouge is a musical. And there's a particular song which absolutely what made me fall in love and agreed to work with the project, which was Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. You know, hearing that song, the amount of ideas that came to me, not necessarily using diamonds, but the, the use of pearls and diamonds and flowers, you know, it's just unconventional. But when I think of diamonds, I think of silk flowers. And, you know, and that is something very prominent in the costume for Moulin Rouge. The use of silk flowers and diamonds and, and pearls, without it being too literal. As most people in this industry, there are challenges that you're going to face, and it's just natural. Some challenges will be things like getting recognition. Well, my team consists of Alana Ash, who deals with management. Anything in the business side, Alana is there. Then Mr. Baba Tunde June, who has to see with, with channeling my ideas. There is Florence, who helps me more of the technical aspect of my creations. Then there is Sophia Robinson, also in the business aspect of it. And Patricia Williams, who as she's also a director. So she sees where I come from as a creative person, you know, and we can then tackle projects together, you know, in terms like, because she's a director of Moulin Rouge, so she's a member of my team, so, so she understands how I work, so, you know, she's part of my team in, in, in creating for something like that. A definite person who made, a, who made an impact in my career would have to be Anna Jones, you know, just the mere fact that I consider her like a mother, you know, she has, the mere fact that she has taken me in, and, and taking me into her workspace, into her creative space and working. For example, like me being in my space right now, and there's so many things going on right now because there's so much people working, literally working around me, creating things right now for production. You know, that in itself, you know, is, is a challenge, and then that helps me to, you know, kind of focus my energy, having all people around me and doing all these creative things. I would have to say there's not enough recognition. But then again, it's also on the part of the designer. What are you doing as a designer to get your to, to make your brand, to create your product, to create an avenue? The best the best business is 
finding a hole and filling it. So the, the main idea that there's going to be a need for something somewhere, how do I satisfy that need? And, that's, and that is itself is good business. That's how you approach design. Where is my need? Where is the niche? Where can I explore that would have where, where my business can expand and explore. Currently, my head, my heart, my being is stuck in the 1930s, 1960s. There's something very profound about a woman back then, the way she dresses, the, her movements, her action, her speech, the simple idea of a white glove. You know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful concept. And that is where I am right now. So create a lot of my creative energy and thankfully all the projects around me set in that era and is somewhat close to that time. So the energy is just constantly around me creating in that time period. So that's always been a, a vision for me. How does a woman look? When was a, in what time was a woman that a woman feel most beautiful in not having to be naked and wearing full clothing? And in the 1960s, it is a natural feeling. Women were classy. The idea of clothing was beauty. Clothing only enhanced a natural, natural attitude. You know, the way you act, the way you, you carried about yourself was equal to the clothing that you wore. Everything was very tailored, very handmade, the lines, the, 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 the darts. Everything was just beautiful. And that is where my creative energy and that is how I create. I am very, I am in love with the color red. You know, Red tells, a, Red tells an amazing story, theatrically, in and out of theatre. And I kind of, I sort of run with that concept where the lining for my clothing is, is always red lining. That is my signature. This, I know it's unconventional in terms of standard dressmaking and, and what you learn going to school that, you know, you line a, clo you line a, a particular garment with its color so you don't see on the, on the lining. Though the lining may show, that is my signature. That is what I create. Red lining is a English shortboard. Next few years, I see myself being a well-known costume designer, being that costume designer that does movies, TV shows, commercial, anything, or an opportunity that I can be given to tell my story. I see myself there, telling my stories. Well, my next project currently is um, San Fernando Fashion Week in creating my collection and a bit of insight into that without giving away too much. Well, you already know where my head is at. Now, where what brought me to there is what has been interesting. It's 101 Dimensions. So, somewhere along the line of 101 Dimensions, so somewhere there my collection is at and my head is at right now in my new project. Jabari Ayendi Tate, congratulations and thank you for chatting with us.